Holy wow, did this blow my mind. This is Minas Tirith like you've never seen it before. The White City, Tower of the Guard, Minas Anor, Tower of the Sun. Known by many names, Minas Tirith is perhaps the single most recognisable piece of imagery from the world of Tolkien, appearing in a wide collection of artwork, video games, and of course, Peter Jackson's film adaptations. But today, we will be taking a truly unique look at the City of the Kings of Men as we explore Minas Tirith in Dreams. Dreams is a walking simulator for the PlayStation 4 that allows you to explore virtual environments, and this project is, as far as I can tell, a community build, so I have attributed the creators of both the game and footage below as best as possible. First up, we'll be enjoying a cinematic flyover as we glide through the cobblestone streets and soar over the mighty battlements, before taking to our feet and exploring some of the hidden gems this incredible 3D virtual render provides. So let us begin our exploration of Min. Minas Tirith. We begin our journey gliding across the fields of the Palenor towards the easternmost point of the White Mountains beneath the spire of Mindoluan, and we enter the outer ring wall through the main gate into the central courtyard of Minas Tirith. There we see that spire of rock thrust outward like the keel of a ship, and we see some beautiful, beautiful arches and Gondorian stonework past the statue of a king of old, and begin to surge our way through the lower level of the outer outermost ring of Minas Tirith. We can see a bit of city life here. We can see some of the famed domes and archways that are so iconic for all Minas Tirith architecture. And now we're moving towards the second gate, uh, which is part of the defensive structure of the design of this city. Of course, the seven levels and the gates to each level set at different points along the wall, moving up now into the depths of the second level. So to fight your way through this entire city is quite a journey, having to weave back and forth through the streets, moving from left to right, looking now down over the south as we fly back around that spire to reveal some more detail here in the second level. We see a lot of different styles of building here, different types of archways and terraced building platforms. Uh, there's different dome shapes as well, circular, uh, parabolic in some of their curves, and of course some fortifications. We see some trebuchets and some defensive uh, pieces here and there. Right now we're flying underneath uh, the ramp up to the gate to the third level, so we're still on the second level, but it's really interesting, all the little nooks and crannies in this 3D model, there's so much detail, and uh, whether or not it's perfectly accurate based off the film model. Uh, certainly, I, I haven't checked that to the nth degree as we move up and see that we're now on the height of the third level, uh, moving once again around that keel of rock so iconic to the city of Minas Tirith. So I'd say that it's relatively accurate, but there may be some liberties taken with the design in terms of keeping it close to the design from the films, but that's obviously the key reference point. Now, I think that there is the gate to move between the third and fourth level levels, uh, and we move back around to that slopey hillside of Mindoluan that the uh, the White City is set upon, and the Halls of the Dead are now away to our left. We see that archway that Denethor will walk upon across uh, towards the conclusion of the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. As we fly down through this section, I believe we're now about on the fourth level, uh, moving through some of the taller, uh, more kind of towered and, and, and detailed sections of the city. It, it almost escalates in grandeur as we fly up and around the model. And of course, we're now at the top, at the seventh level, for but a brief moment, spiraling around the apex of that outermost thrusted spire of rock. Such an incredible... Uh, piece of visual detail there. Flying back over now, this looks like to be probably the fifth level. Uh, moving up into the sixth, the gate should be just underneath us as we spire around and we can see some of the, that's the Tower of the Spire of Ecthelion, I believe, up the top there, flying under another courtyard, another tunnelway, and digging ourselves. This is the first time we've moved through that spire and there are many passageways that do that across the various levels. This camera work is really cool, I have to say. And moving and spiraling around once more, and we see the hall at the top of Minas Tirith for the first time in some great detail, nestled at the base of the Tower of Akthelion. Uh, and now moving down, this is essentially level six here, and we get some really lovely insight onto how this part of Minas Tirith works with that final ramp ascending 
through a corridor lit by flickering torches as we move up the final passage of steps or ramped flagstones into the court of the fountain, which is of course the site of the white tree of Gondor, the tree of the king. And that is a beautiful shot there, showing the base of the Tower of Ecthelion and the facade that is so iconic, you can almost feel Denethor just sitting in there brooding on the steward's throne or the steward's chair. And now a few nice top-down shots. That is an incredible perspective of the uh, Pelennor below. And that is a beautiful shot there as we move away from the court of the fountain and head towards the wide expanse of the Pelennor below. So that is a pretty incredible way to check out the city of Minas Tirith. I'm sure you'll agree. A big shout out to James Francis Collins on the Zorpa Zorp community Facebook page who brought this whole project to my attention because I cannot think of a better reference for making Minas Tirith or Gondorian terrain than this incredible virtual 3D model. And that cinematic flyover is not all, ladies and gentlemen. We can grab our own two feet and jump down into this model and explore it at our leisure. It is a proper 3D virtual render that we can walk through and explore and this just blows my mind because I've always wondered what connects those two buildings how does the bit of road work there and ever if I need to know I can just go and take a look myself so that is what we're going to take a look at right now let's jump down and check out Minas Tirith in even greater detail so our walking journey began most fittingly through the main gate and into the courtyard and now we find ourselves upon the battlements of the outer ring wall looking up at the beautiful city above us so many Many incredible architectural features and it's really interesting to see the width of the battlements and all of the defensive formations that we have here the towers there's a trebuchet and look at that beautiful sunny flare so cinematic so cinematic let's dive down into that lower level now still on the first outer ring of Minas Tirith some beautiful vines featuring on some of these buildings but there's so many archways and colonnades of various styles the detail is mental as we return to that central courtyard moving past that kind of main facade that you see as you enter and of course the slightly misrendered statue there and we're gonna move down this main alleyway the stables there on our left and we're beginning to kind of enter the uh, upper regions of this first level the ground slowly sloping up and we move through those uh, kind of alleyways of trees to find ourselves at the second gate which is a huge defensive feature covered from above on the battlements and this ramps right up into the second level but still covered from above by many battlements and defensive features. We'll duck now up this little stairway and have a look at our second sort of battlement section. This is the second outer ring wall, the second level of the city. The battlements aren't as defensive here. We've got some beautiful, beautiful features. The buildings will start to get a little taller now as we move up as well. Uh, and then of course our first tunnel cutting through that spire of rock thrust outward like the keel of a ship is the uh, famous description that Tolkien outlined for it. We've got some lovely shots here looking up as we move towards the next gate, which is gate number three, moving between the second and third level. It's got a large ramp, again, creating that ascent towards the higher levels of the mountain. And there are some lower levels that we saw uh, underneath us of the second level uh, during that flyover. A different gate style. Uh, the author's taken a little liberty there and gone for more of a portcullis style. And we move into this third level, which is a little bit more of narrow streets, kind of alleyways and a little more constricted. There's not as much land up on these levels, so we've got uh, a little less kind of floor space to work between, so the various alleyways and buildings are a little more constrained, but still a lot of incredible Gondorian features. We're going to move through that spire of rock once again. These next few shots are as if we took that left fork, exploring the last features of the third level, and then if we take the right fork, that will send us up to the fourth gate between the third and fourth level. As we move through that gate, we can go left or right, but our journey right will continue upwards as we follow that zigzagging pattern moving ever upwards to the top of the city. We see there another access point through that central spire with some lovely tall uh, foundations around us and some really lovely uh, architecture on those balustrades there, winding our way up and again in level five now, I believe, moving through that central spire. And the features are a lot less kind of defined 
defensive rigid architecture here. As we move up, everything's more ornate, more beautiful. If war is coming to the fifth and sixth level of the city, uh, yeah, we're in some serious trouble. We're now approaching the sixth gate, which grants us access to the sixth ring of the city via a narrow passageway and many flights of steps. The sixth ring is quite small. Obviously, these concentric circles are decreasing in size, and this is a very small ring with not many buildings at all. It's mostly a viewing platform that feeds into these ramps that move up into the citadel for the seventh level, which we can see up there, the beginning of the court of the fountain. We can also continue down this little stairwell to see that the sixth level does continue all the way around, and that would be the lower section of the upper barracks there. But we're going to move up this main pathway now into the court of the fountain, and we can see there before us the main citadel of Minas Tirith. That is there, the Tower Hall, and of course the Spire of Ecthelia, in which we had a, a look around uh, during the flyover. And it's just, it's incredible. You can literally walk around all of these components. And, and the big takeaway for me is you can truly understand scale and how all of the various buildings relate to each other because you can move through the space. In fact, to getting even more perspective, we can ascend up into the Tower of Ecthelia. Now this is pretty high and if you're looking at this in VR, which I believe is possible, this is some pretty serious vertigo. We can now have a look down over the back of Minas Tirith towards the Halls of the Dead and down over the top of the Tower Hall. Descending from the tower, we return to the courtyard, the Court of the Fountain, and look at that facade for the Tower Hall. Really ornate and fascinating, but we can even enter and have a look at the throne itself. Now in this particular version, the throne isn't fully rendered, but that beautiful two-tone of the black and white set stone in this marble hall uh, is, is looking fantastic. Obviously all of the statues are missing, all of those reliefs of various kings of old, so there's some inner detailing is obviously not reflected in this interior section, but that's a great shot moving outwards to see the white tree through the door framed by the ring of the gate into the tower hall. It's just, it's pretty magical, I've got to say, moving around inside this and being able to see everything at, at such detail. It's just a model maker's dream and it's going to be an incredible reference point for my build of Minas Tirith. And to finish us off, of course, we've got to go and take a look at uh, at the old uh, extra jump there, right? <laughs> Could we be Denethor? I don't think we shall. But yeah, wow, look at that. That is quite a drop down there to the field of the Pelennor below us. Of course, there is no uh, Ramus Ekor, no ring wall out on that Pelennor field, so it's definitely not book accurate, but very, very much based off the films here. Jeez, that's quite a way below us, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. And that's a great Great vista looking back at the citadel with the mountains and Mount Mindoluan rising up behind us. But there we have a view of Minas Tirith from our feet, from the ground up, and what an incredible way to check out that space. I can really see myself referencing that a lot as I work on my own terrain build for Minas Tirith. And furthermore, I thought I would release alongside this video the templates that we have for Gondorian houses. We're developing a whole slate of templates for our community build project. I'll link that video down in the description if you're not familiar with it, but essentially because of the current health crisis here in Australia, we're building a huge scale replica of Minas Tirith and having people all over the community work on it and build it together. And of course, we're going to need some templates to manage all of that. So the first set of battlement templates are out and I'm also now going to upload an incredible set of Gondorian buildings that have been developed by Albert Fraval, one of our wonderful Patreons uh, who uh, has been a longtime supporter of the channel and he's been working away tirelessly to create a lovely set of templates for Gondorian buildings. So those will be available linked down in the description below so that you guys can start getting cracking on some Gondorian uh, various buildings and all, all sorts of things. Who knows what they could be? Barracks, state Tables, lots of different things you could repurpose those templates for. Uh, and of course, we will be doing an in-depth video on those and, and I'll be showing you a whole build tutorial for them later on. But uh, I just thought I'd give you the templates early so that you can get cracking without me. So there we have it, guys. Minas Tirith like we have never seen it before. This has absolutely blown me away. I'm not going to lie. I think it's just breathtaking and the incredible, incredible resource it's going to be for making terrain, for building Gondorian stonework and buildings and for making Minas Tirith. Being able to get in that space, I'm, I'm so excited to go and get cracking on redesigning the lower levels of the city with such a high level of accuracy. 
accuracy. So I hope this sort of showcase of this stuff has been useful for you guys. If you've been inspired by it or you're psyched to get cracking on your part of the community build, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it and I can't wait to see us all cracking on and getting some incredible Minas Tirith terrain made. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful and I'll see you guys next week with the next update for the Minas Tirith Terrain Guide series. Thanks so much. Yeah.